oh, that's great. Looks like everybody has already built Milo the Science Rover, which is fantastic. So uh, I'll just put your hands down. And uh, what we want to talk about today is the role of science rovers. Okay, so a science rover, who's heard of what a science rover is? Who, who has any uh, idea of, um, of any real world science rovers that they've heard of? Has anybody heard of a real world science rover? The Mars rover. The Mars rover, fantastic. Do you know what the name of the Mars rover or the rovers were? No, I don't. Nah, that's okay. Well, their, their names were called Curiosity and Opportunity. Yeah, and there's also another one called uh, uh, Spirit as well. So, well done. Humans have actually sent rovers um, uh, to, to not many places, right? So we've sent a rover, rovers to Mars. Mars is one of the most interesting places because um, it is very similar to Earth in the size and distance away from the sun. And um, uh, we send rovers so that when they land on the planet, they can also move around. Right, they can discover more and more places. They're not like loon, uh, landers. Right? A lot of robots that we send to other planets are called landers, and what they do is they just sit down on the the ground and then they just start analyzing its immediate surroundings. But not rovers. Rovers are designed to go to another planet or another place, and uh, it's meant to explore and move around on its own. Today we're going to check out how we can use something called sensors on a robot. So a sensor is anything that can give information back to the robot, right? So when we think about our robot, we always give our robot instructions. So last week we learned how to make a fan move and all those instructions were given by us. Yeah, we, give, we tell the robot how, how fast to spin the motor, we tell the robot uh, how long to move for, what color to flash, right? But when we give the robot a sensor, we are giving it ways to bring more information back into the robot. And an example of this is, like Ryan said, it's like a, um, a, some sort of reflection sensor. Uh, things like a camera is a sensor. Uh, things like um, uh, a thermometer is a sensor. It's like it senses how hot or cold something is. So sensors are really good for taking the surrounding information into the robot so that the robot can uh, start to make decisions on its own. And that's what we're going to do today. Okay. So before we get any further, uh, let's get started with We Do Too. Okay. So uh, if you have your computer with you, I want you to get started on We Do Too. So when you start up We Do Too, you probably come up with this screen first. And then what we want to do is we want to press the close button so that we skip this little section here. And then we are inside this project area. So what I want you to do is just go down to my projects and click on this plus sign, okay? This to represent a new project. If you're, if you're using a, an older version of the software, it can be a book with a plus sign, okay? But just look for the plus sign and then we click on it, okay? And then you'll see that we have a blank screen here, a blank screen with just a play button, okay? Excellent, so everybody's going okay? Very good. So now I'm going to show you something uh, on, uh, on my robot. So here is my robot. Okay, you see it on, uh, on the little camera view. So I want you to connect your robot to the computer. So if you're looking at your computer, you press on, if you haven't connected yet, then you have to connect it like this, okay? But if you've connected already, then don't worry about what I'm about to do next. So you know if it's connected or not by looking at the light here. If it's no blue light, that means it's not connected, okay? So on the screen, you click on the Bluetooth button on the top right-hand corner, okay? If my picture is blocking the way, you can drag my picture away, okay? All right, so here, now it says to choose Smart Hub, but it can't see your Smart Hub yet. What I need to do is I need to press this green button, and then as soon as I see the Smart Hub pop up, I need to press on the Smart Hub, okay? Ready? So I press on my green button, and then I see my Smart Hub pop up, 
and I click on that. And then it gives me a thumbs up to say I'm connected, okay? So try to connect your robot first. If you have a problem, I mean, uh, raise your hand, okay? If you have a problem, raise your hand. All right. So this is our robot. This is um, uh, Milo, the science rover, okay? So uh, you guys have already built it. If you see this blue light, it means that we are connected. It is going good, all right? So now, how, how does this wheel move? Well, this wheel moves when this motor moves, okay? When this motor moves, it's either going to spin clockwise like this or anti-clockwise like this. Okay. So if it moves clockwise, if it spins clockwise, then it transfers energy, all right? It transfers energy to this pulley, okay? So this rubber band here, in mechanical terms, when, we, when we're talking about robotics engineers, okay? We call this a pulley, okay? And this pulley loops around a wheel inside, inside the body of the robot, okay? And that wheel turns this axle that goes all the way through the middle of the robot, see? This wheel goes all the way through the middle of the robot, which means that when one wheel turns, the other wheel is also going to turn. Okay, so that is good. <coughs> Pardon me. This is called a pulley, and it's really important that we remember that we connect our motor to the robot. Okay, make sure that this cable is connected nice and securely. Okay, if it's not connected properly, then it's not going to work. Okay, so now we are going to do a very quick experiment. Okay, with the code that, uh, with some very simple code, just to make sure that our robot is working. All right, so back to this screen here. We press the close button to close the screen. And now we're going to make our robot move forward for one count, okay? I call it a count because uh, this, uh, this timer doesn't exactly count seconds, okay? It's like two counts for a second. But in order to do that, what we're going to do is we're gonna set the power of the robot, okay? Let's set the power of the motor to eight. So we just keep it here at eight. And then we're going to let it spin for one second. And then we're going to stop. Now, depending on how you build the robot, it should uh, move forward or backwards, okay? If it moves forward, uh, if it moves backwards, then we need to change the direction of the motor as well, okay? So let's try this. Whoop, mine is moving backwards. So if you press the play button, you'll see your robot might move forwards or backwards. If it's moving backwards, like my one, then I also need to tell it to spin my, um, spin my axle clockwise because it's spinning anti-clockwise right now. You see this? You see, it's going backwards that way, which means that this motor is spinning anti-clockwise, which is not what I want, okay? I need it to spin this way, which is clockwise. So here, I'm going to get back into the code. And then I gotta drag in the clockwise block. Okay? But where do I put it? I actually have to put it straight after when I set the power of the motor. Oops. Okay, set straight after the power of the motor. What we want to do now is go to the uh, home area and then we're going to build the first add-on for Milo, which is uh, Milo B, okay? So go to classroom projects after you press that home button. So if you were here, you press that home button up the top left. Home button at the top left. And then you press classroom projects. And then we're going to build Milo's motion sensor, okay? So here, we're going to build the, um, uh, the sensor for our next part of the activities. 
Okay, click on Milo's motion sensor. We go next, go. That's the next arrow. And then this is going to show you a video of what we're trying to do, okay? This is going to show you the video of Milo moving forward until it sees a plant and then it stops. Okay, so that's what we're trying to do. So we go here and then we go start building, okay? So if you have any problems with building or reaching this point, let me know. And then we'll start this building together. All right. If you can't see the instructions, then you can always look at my screen if you want to watch the instructions, okay? All right. So we start off with Milo over here. We add. Uh, if you guys have, are on the instructions yourselves, uh, you guys can can do it yourself as well. How are you doing? I finished. Finished, fantastic. All right, I'm about to finish as well. That's wonderful work, excellent. That didn't smell. What? All right, so now that we have uh, all finished, have a look at this. So this is what um, uh, what Ryan mentioned before, right? Was the, um, the sensor uh, looks pretty familiar, okay? So, here we have a rover, and now we have an added sensor here, okay? Because um, this eye that we had uh, for Milo when we, um, uh, when we first, first built it, this eye over here, that's, that's just for decoration, right? This eye doesn't actually see anything, right? Does that make sense? So this eye is just there to, uh, to give it some decoration. However, this sensor, is not a decoration. This sensor actually does see things, okay? So there is one part of the sensor will send out an invisible beam, and then the other part of the sensor will detect uh, the beam coming back, okay? And that makes it so that this sensor can detect uh, how far things are, okay? The distance of things, okay? So that's really, really cool. So. If we detect some uh, obstacle uh, for a robot, then we would want it to tell us. Uh, we would want the robot to 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 tell us that um, uh, it has found something, right? If I was a space rover on Mars, for example, and I was moving around the Martian surface with my cameras and my sensors poking out of my rover, I'd want the sensors to tell me if I'm about to fall off the side of a cliff 
or something, right? Or if I'm about to run into a wall, right? So it's very important to have sensors to tell the robot what is going on, all right? So now we're going to position the sensor so that it is facing to the side of the robot so that when it drives past the plant, as soon as it detects a distance change, that's when it knows that we have hit the plant. Does that make sense? So because I can detect how far things are, if I drive past the, the plant and then I see the distance suddenly change, then I know that I have hit the plant. Okay, so I'll, I'll show you what I mean in this, um, in this close up. Okay, so make sure that you have positioned your robot's sensor to the side like this, but make sure it is high enough, so I mean low enough to hit to detect the plant, okay, when it's driving past. Does that make sense? And then as soon as it drives past the plant, it's going to detect a decrease in distance because it's now detecting a distance of this far. And before it was detecting a much further distance, right? But as soon as it gets close, uh, there's a change of distance, okay? And then we want the robot to stop and then to make a sound, okay? So let's um, show you how that code is done. So if you've uh, done the build code, we can close it. Uh, and then we can go next. Uh, this sh we should already be connected. And here it already gives you a, um, uh, some instructions on how to do this code, okay? So we'll copy this, but this is not entirely correct, okay? This is just a, um, um, a, a guide as to what you should do, okay? But let's, let's do what it's telling us and then we can um, uh, improve it later on. So first thing is we need a motor power block, go motor power block, and it suggests to use four as the power. And that makes sense because we want the power to be, uh, to be nice and low so that we can drive slowly, okay? So we click on the number eight, and then we change it to four. We click on number eight change it to four. Raise your hand if, uh, if you ever get stuck, okay? After we change it power to four, we change the um, direction of the wheels. So remember how we did it last time? We go clockwise. So change the power to four, move the wheels clockwise, Next, this is what's called a weight block. Now, a weight block, a weight block is, uh, in We Do Too, it is the most important block to understand, okay? Because the weight block also means to wait until, okay? So when you drag on a weight block, it will start off with a number. That number means to wait for this many counts. Okay, so if it waits for uh, five counts, then it's like it's going to get to that block and then it's going to wait for five counts before it goes off to the next block. But it also means to wait until. So that means that we can put a sensor in there and say, wait until I sense something. I sense that this has changed or increased or decreased. Okay, so the wait block is one of the most important blocks to learn about. And we'll be learning about this block pretty much every single lesson, okay? So when you drag the weight block up, it's going to start off with a number on it, but we need to replace that with the motion sensor, which is this sensor that has the two eyes, okay? That looks like two eyes. Okay. Here we are. So when we drag the weight block up, this has the number one on it. Okay, it means to wait for a count, which is about half a second. But we don't want it to wait for half a second. What do we want it to do? Is we want it to wait until something goes in front of the camera. And that's what is represented by these two arrows, okay? Something going in front of the camera, moving, moving uh, forward or moving back in front of the, the sensor. And then what do we want to do after it detects this change? We want it to stop the motor, okay? So that's the stop button, uh, stop 
motor symbol. So we go stop motor. And then we make a sound. So this is just making the default number one sound, which is the, um, uh, the little we do two sound. Okay. Make sure you, you have this code ready. And then I want you to put your robot to make sure that it can, when it goes forward, it's going to hit, um, uh, it's going to scan past the, the plant, okay? Because that's how we will make sure that it is actually working. Does anyone need more time on the code? Everybody okay? Let's have a look. So I'm gonna make the robot stay here like this. And then when I press, when I press the play button, you see that? So it moves forward, and but then it stops as soon as it hits the plant. Let's try it again. All right, so that works for me. Is it working for you? Can you raise your hand if you've uh, tried it and tell me if it's working or not? How are you guys going? There is a, there's still a little trick in, in this because uh, the instructions are not 100% accurate with what we're trying to do, but I'll, I'll, we'll talk about it in a moment once you guys can get it working, okay? Make sure that um, uh, your robot has its sensor nice and low and pointing to the side, okay? So that once it, detects, once it drives past the plant, it's going to detect it, and then it's going to um, uh, give it, uh, make it stop, okay? All right. How are we doing? Right. So here we have the robot, it's moving forward, and then as soon as it detects something, it's going to stop. Okay. But now we can make the robot do some even cooler stuff, right? Because with this sensor, we have given the robot some eyes, okay? The robot now has uh, a way to sense danger in its surroundings, okay? So, um, I'm going to give you a challenge in a moment, but before we do that, we're going to update our code because uh, the code here, let me explain the code um, a little bit more in depth. Has anyone got any questions first? Uh, raise your hand or, 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 if you, or if it's working or it's not working, um, put your hand up so that I know uh, how you guys are going, okay? Is the sensor working, Lucy? Yes. It's that's good. Is it cool? Yeah. It's the noise when she stops at it. We can improve the noise uh, on that later. Uh, I'll, I'll show you something even cooler, okay? Hold on for a second. Are you, okay. are, you on a, are, you, are you playing the robot on a table? Yes. Excellent. That's good. All right. So let's have a look at this. All right, let's break down our code, okay? So the first block is telling the robot that we can start running this script, okay? Where a script is just a collection of, of code, all right? So we're going to start this script, and then we're going to change the motor power to four. Why do we change it to four and not something like 10? Well, because if we were going too quickly, then we might overshoot the, the sample, right? We don't want to go too quickly. We want to go nice and slowly so that we can sense things really carefully, right? So that's why we have the power set to four. Then we're spinning it clockwise because that makes it go forward. 
And then this block, I really want to explain further because everybody needs to understand this. This is saying to wait until something changes distance in front of the camera, in front of the sensor, the motion sensor. And that can be that something is moving away or towards the, the sensor, okay? But when we're trying to detect the plant, we, we're not trying to detect if things are moving away from the sensor, we're just trying to detect if something is coming towards the sensor. Does that make sense? Because I start off with nothing in front of the sensor, then when I go in front of the plant, something has moved towards the sensor because now the distance is much smaller, right? It used to be a, a really big distance, and then in front of the, the plant, it goes into a small distance. So it has, to be, it has to be coming towards the sensor. So we're going to change that block to be a bit more accurate. So this is how we do it. Very simple. All you have to do is tap on or click the sensor until it is showing the arrow that shows sensing towards the sensor. So you tap on it. That's not right. Tap on it again. That's it. <coughs> so we are moving until we are sensing something coming towards the sensor, which is more accurate for what we are trying to do. Okay, and this is going to work exactly the same as what it did before. And then it's going to stop the motor and then we play the sound. Okay, so we try it again. You're going to work perfectly the same. Okay, make sure that you learn how to do, do this change on the, on the sensor. Play once again. Okay. All right, very good. And now I'm going to get you guys to do an activity that I call the cliffhanger, okay? This is a very dangerous robot mission, okay? If you have a table, then I want you to make it so that your robot uses its sensor to move forward until it detects the edge of the table, and then it has to move back, right? We don't want it to go off the table and then fall off because then your mission is failed, okay? We want the robot to detect the edge of the table and then move back. So make sure that you put your hand under the robot just in case it falls off the table, okay? Because we don't want your robot to fall off the table <laughs> because if it does, then it's gonna go everywhere, okay? You don't want that to happen. So we're going to have to code the robot. We need to code the robot again. But how are we going to change the code? We know that it can do it because we already have a sensor, all right? But we, instead of detecting something coming towards the robot, we're now sensing if something is going away from the robot. Because we now need to have our sensor pointing down towards the table, right? And if it gets to the edge of the table, then the table's not gonna be there anymore. Then the distance has increased in front of the sensor. So as soon as that happens, we're not just going to stop the robot, we're going to move backwards as well, okay? So let's try that. This is a pretty tricky uh, challenge for your first lesson, for your second lesson. So uh, don't be shy, okay? All right, here. So this is my code for when I detect something coming towards me like the plant, then I stop, make a sound, right? So I still do the same thing, except instead of detecting something coming towards me, I need to detect something going away from me because the table, when it is the end of the table, it's fallen off into, uh, uh, fallen away from the sensor, right? So I press this one, press this one. And then once I tap it, did you see that? It's turned into this other symbol, which is saying 
that I'm detecting if something is moving away from the sensor, which makes sense because it started off really close, like the table is really close, but then when I get to the edge of the table, it's not close anymore, it's fallen, fallen away. So when it falls away, then what I do need to do, well, I'm not going to stop the motor, I'm going to move back, right? And to move back, I switch the rotation to be anti-clockwise. And I want to move back for about one count. So I go motor, one count. And then I can stop if you want to. Make a sound if you want to. Okay. And then if I press play now, the robot is going to move forward and then move back away from danger. Okay. You didn't see if you didn't see that, I'll show you a close-up view. Yeah. So when it sees the edge of the table, it's not going to fall off the edge. So you've made a really smart robot now that is now intelligent enough to avoid falling off the edge of a table. All right. You can see it again on the big camera. Okay. So that's how we that's how we do it.